Hello everyone, it's really good to talk to you again. My name is Kip and this is my wife Judy. Uh, we are part of the management team here at Puna Christian Ministries and I have to admit something to you. I don't understand culture. I, I've lived long enough to see clothing fads come in and then go out and then come back and then go out again and then even come back again and again. You know, dress and, and what's in seems to change so quickly in our world that I can't keep up. So let's go ahead and open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity today to share. Help us to speak the message you would want spoken, that someone in the audience might be able to take this information and apply it to their lives in a way that will give them more contentment in their lives. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. So, Pastor Jaime asked us to talk about K-pop. And I have to be honest, I have no idea what K-pop is. What, what is K-pop? Well, it's supposedly Korean popular music. But as far as it goes, it's not just about the music. It's including fashion, supposedly. Yeah, I, I, I did a little research, obviously, and I, I found that there's K-pop stores. And it's like, what does it have to do with music? Or I, It was very odd to me. So what makes this special? this k-pop thing well let's say that that's what supposedly what's in in like accepted in the culture it's because you know we have the social media we have the television and it's highly advertised out there and you know they're 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 showing people you know they're they're, they're trying to promote something and and of course, you know, um, it's it's marketing of something. They're trying to sell you something, and and people would see it and they think, oh, I guess that's what's cute and what's you know what's popular and what's um, what's in or what's uh, cool. Okay, cool. Now. I I know I'm a little out of touch because of my age, and, and I get it that it's popular. But the question is, what is the value to you? It, it's, is, it, is it important? And I promise it's going to change. You know, this culture or what is popular right now is, is not going to stick around. And, and the question I have to ask for you is, is why do, do you think this is important you need to ask yourself that because the reason behind this being so popular is really what's at the root of the potential problem with it 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 leads us to not be very happy with our lives we're so envious of something that we don't have that often we we forget to be thankful for what it is that we have you know i grew up in the 70s and 80s so now you know how old i am uh, that was like bell-bottom jeans and tie-dye t-shirts and that's peace signs and all that kind of stuff in the 60s and 70s and you know I never got to participate in any of these things mainly because I had a really odd body shape I was very muscular when I was young and so none of that stuff fit so I couldn't have worn it even if my parents would have bought it for me uh, you know, my mother made most of my clothing, believe it or not. And I, I was okay with that because I, that's just the way it was. And I, I think that's the way we need to be. What, it's, it's important to be able to put something on our bodies. What it is that we're putting on is, is maybe not as important. And we need to keep that in perspective. And then we'll have contentment with what we have. I was very happy with what I had. And, and I think Judy has a similar experience from her childhood. Well, um, obviously, we're, 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 I would say we're poor also. I mean, I grew up poor, and, you know, I remember the only um, clothing I have to go out is two T-shirts and one jeans, and that's all I got. But I was never, like, discontented or not contented at all because I was, like, thinking that, hey, I might want some of those, but I can't afford it right now. I don't have money. We don't have money. And it's like maybe when, well, I want to finish college and have a job so I would be able to 
like buy some of those in the future. So I was I was okay with it. Yeah, and I, and I think it's kind of a, a good coping mechanism in a lot of ways. I, I remember growing up, kids had trendy things, and you had some envy, I guess. I, I don't remember, but it didn't really hurt me. I, I didn't feel like I was missing out. I still don't feel like I missed out, I, especially now. I look back at it, and most of those trends were ridiculous to say the least I, it looks I went funny <laughs> i went through in the 80s where they had leg warmers if you guys don't know what those, those are google it sometime and you'll understand why it was ridiculous okay or uh, boys would go around with with pink shirts with the co collars turned up I, I i don't get it i still don't get it it was crazy so that's what culture actually does but why, why are these things so important to you you have to ask well, I want to read a scripture that we did in the other session as well. It's, it's the Apostle Paul, and he was asked a question, or it appears he was asked a question about what is, what's good and what's not good. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, Paul says this, and he's writing his letters like, You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. Now you say... I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. And I think it's really important to kind of grasp that. It's, we have freedom in Christ because of the sacrifice that he made for us. So we have this freedom, and a lot of people feel that, that means they can do just about anything they want. But not everything is good, and we should stay away from things that aren't good. Not everything's beneficial. And if it's not beneficial to us, why would you do it? And we can apply that to fashion, we can apply that to alcohol, we can apply that to, to drug use, we can apply it to a lot of things in our lives. Um, so you have to ask yourself, do I need these things? It's not about what I want, do, do I need it? Is it good and beneficial to my life? And more importantly, is it gonna be something that's actually gonna stick around? I, you know, when we're talking about things like K-pop, the reason you like it is because someone has showed this to you. You know, what I've seen of the K-pop, it, it, it kind of looks like a combination of, of things that normally wouldn't be put together in any other time in, in history. You know, it, you think it's cute and you think it's cool and you like the person that's, that's wearing it and telling you how cool it is. But is it? it, it is it really good? And you have to test that. You have to test everything based on that approach. So you have to think, well, let's, let's contrast it a little bit. So if anything can be good in itself, is cheating on a test ever good? Well, of course not. It, it's never good. It's not good and it's not beneficial. It's not good because you're deceiving. It's not beneficial because you're not learning. That is really what Paul is talking about, and I think fashion applies equally. Now, I can't tell you, but I can share when I made some bad choices in my life and I wasted resources. Uh, and, and that's really when we're, we're obsessed with culture and with fashion. We're wasting resources to try to get that thing that's the most expensive thing on the rack, usually. You know, cultural things can be really, really deceiving because they lead you to believe you need it when you really don't. But they don't last. And we, 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 should, we should care about the things that really last. Uh, we should care about the things that are, are consistently good or we're really wasting the resources that God has given us. Um, let me talk about the music too. Um, see, um, yeah, you might enjoy those those kind of music, but there's actually a lot of good alternatives to that that is more godly. Um, there's really good Christian music that has better better uh, message, and actually, you think like it doesn't really affect you, but some of those. Some of those music, they, they, they have really bad messages. And, and the Christian ones, they have good messages. And the more you saturate yourself with, with godly things or, you know, things that, that, that is good, and, and you tend to, to like, your, your, your brain will be 
full with good stuff instead of this crazy junky stuff that the world gives you. Yeah, I think you know the lyrics of songs actually does matter, and I think an exercise that you should do, and I did this about 15 years ago, was actually look or read the lyrics from some of the songs I most enjoyed. I, I yes. liked rock music, and uh, when I started looking at the actual lyrics, I realized these are horrible messages. They're messages of discontent, unhappiness. Most music doesn't have a good message. It, it's actually encourages us to look at what's bad, looks at all the things we're missing in life. So look at those lyrics. And again, about 15 years ago, I set out to only listen to Christian music. And there's actually a lot of really good Christian music, a lot of contemporary. You can get uh, hip hop uh, music in the Christian genre. But the difference was for me is the words that were going into my brain through that music had a positive message. And it changed my attitude quite a bit. I know that's tough to do when you're young, but I'm telling you that what you put into your ears, what you put into your mind, will affect your attitude. And if you want a better attitude, you need to listen to music that has a better attitude. You need to read things that have a better attitude. You need to watch things on TV that have a better attitude. And that will improve the way you look at your life. If you put things that are showing everything that's bad about the world, then that's what you're going to focus on. So I think this idea of, of what is good and what is, is beneficial has is, is got to be at the foundation of everything that we, we talk about. And you have to realize that a lot of things we listen to or we are envious for are actually destructive to our lives. They're not beneficial at all. And I think dress is always one that comes up. And I want to read a passage out of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. And this is talking about w women and how they should dress when they're around people, and not just in church. And it says, likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly attire. Now, this does not mean you can't wear jewelry or, or fancy clothes. It means you have to be careful of your circumstances. You, you want to make sure that you're not, uh, you're not making someone else feel bad. And, and I wanted to read another scripture real quick, just so you understand that in the Bible, nice clothes are not bad. Uh, Jesus actually tells a story. It's called the prodigal son's parable. You, you may have heard of it. it Jesus talks in Luke chapter 15 verse 22 and he says this but the father said to his servants bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet so Jesus is showing that when we're celebrating putting nice things on is not bad why would Jesus include it in his story if it was so we have to balance these things it's not about the nice robe or the nice clothes or the ring on your finger or fancy shoes those things in themselves is not bad but why we choose them and how we show them to others makes them bad, good, or wrong, okay? So I think uh, many Christian groups think that makeup and jewelry is bad. We, we don't agree with that. We don't think the Bible actually says that. We don't think it's a bad thing in itself. God has allowed these things to be created. They're, they're not evil. God's creation is never evil it's how we use these things so let's let's go back and let's talk about clothes just a little bit so clothes and fashion these are really costly things but they're not bad in themselves well let me let me talk about like you know why you said like why do you choose to wear certain clothing when it comes to fashion or things like that um the problem that I see with that is, um, are you trying to look nice? That's okay. But are you trying to show off? And then on top of that, then other people or other kids your age would feel bad and old people or the older adult in your church would feel like um, they get offended with what you're wearing. And then on top of that, can you afford it? 
it's like, do you have money to spare to buy those kind of like fashion attire? Yeah, it's a really good point. I know most of my life, I had maybe a couple of shirts, maybe three or four, because um, I, I, I didn't have money, especially when I was going to school. And I think that was okay. And in fact, I still have those shirts and shorts. I, I wear them still today because things that are, are appropriate, uh, things that are, are neutral, those things never go out of style. And, and I would encourage you to, to choose things like that because they never go out of style. You don't have to keep up with the people next to you. If you look nice in your clothes, you're going to always look nice in your clothes. And I wanted to read another scripture because I know this is a tricky issue. Because if I can, why shouldn't I? And if, you know, Paul talks about this in Romans. Now, he's talking about food and food offered to idols. But I want you to listen and see how this could apply to fashion or to uh, whatever's in in the culture and and our ability to influence others with our actions. So yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Now I know and am convinced on the authority of the Lord Jesus that no food in of itself is wrong to eat but if someone believes it is wrong then that then for that person it is wrong for if another believer is distressed by what you eat you are not acting in love if you eat it don't let your eating ruin someone else someone for whom Christ died then you will not be criticized for doing something you believe is good for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you serve Christ with this attitude, you will please God and others will approve of you too. So then let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Don't tear apart the work of God over what you eat. Remember, all foods are acceptable, but it is wrong to eat something if it makes another person stumble. I'm going to stop there. So, by the way, you know, what Kip is reading, every, every time it's mentioned about food or drink, replace it with clothing. And then you can see, like, none of the clothing itself is bad. So it, it all applies, really. Yeah, because it's, it's this idea that we have freedom. You have freedom to make choices, but your choices affect other people. You, you have to always recognize that people watch. You watch other people. You're affected by what they do. In fact, this K-pop thing wouldn't exist if you weren't influenced by what other people do. So even if it is good, you have to be aware of how it impacts other people. And that is how you live a Christ-centered life. And it's a better life because, well, what people think of you matters to you, okay? You, you're impacted when they think badly of you. So obviously how you, well, when you do things that are, are, are causing them to be distressed in their spirit because you're, you're wearing something they think is inappropriate or they're, they're looking at how expensive it is and they're envious of you, those are all things we have to take into consideration. And I know that's really difficult, but the analogy Paul used for food was a big deal in the first century when he was writing. Now it's probably fashion. It's probably what we wear. And what people think does matter because you have an impression of other people. And sometimes we need to take a step back and look at ourselves. And it's like when you see someone that has really nice clothes are you envious do you think bad about that person you know when you see someone that is not dressed nicely do you do you think well gosh you know you think badly about that person the, those are the things we should not do that's the reason paul is encouraging us to try to live harmoniously which means choose things that that don't offend when possible it's not always possible but if we try to live that way 
then we're doing what is the best as far as the best way to live. That's the way Jesus would have us live. That's the best way for us to live. And two, is when you don't have enough money, stewardship of that money is, is really important. And I think when we go to school, if we wear things that draw attention to ourselves, then we're wearing it for the wrong reason. If we wear things to church just so we can draw attention or we know someone in the church is going to sneer at us because it's not appropriate, then we're, the reason we are wearing it is the wrong. And it, it, it goes both ways, even for us older folks. And sometimes we wear things that are stuck in the 70s and 80s, and you look at us and you think we're weird. Why, why are we stuck you know, in 40-year-old type clothing? And we need to be sensitive to you as well. So it, it's a two-way street. The clothing in itself is not bad as long as it is appropriate. It it's still shows modesty. Uh, modesty because, well, that's that's the the best way to dress. It, it, it doesn't draw attention to yourself. Well, I think for modesty, um, we joke about it. We say, like, it needs to cover things that needs to be covered. Then that's modest. Um, because, like, every culture or every uh, country or you know society has a different different definition of what is modest like i'll give you an example like in india this best clothing the national clothing of the women shows the belly okay so that's modest for them and actually when when women wear like that Nobody likes looking at their belly, okay? Some of the older women, their 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 belly doesn't look that good. <laughs> but it's it's just the way they dress up that's that's modest to them. But for for us Filipinos, you go to church with belly out, it's that's not modest at all. <coughs> and um <coughs> excuse me. And <coughs> it doesn't need to be like your dress where there's some churches in Philippines that thinks that you need to have a really long dress or long skirt to be modest. I don't agree with that. It's really hot in Philippines. I mean, um, I think covering your thigh is, 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 is good, but not all the way to your, to your feet. And, um, you know, uh, mini skirt is not quite, not quite appropriate in Philippines because it's showing you know much. your your legs in 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 our culture in philippines legs should be covered like in america you know that that's not like that's not inappropriate to wear short shorts but you know so yeah we we have to consider like um what is appropriate in our in, in our setting or 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 where you live yeah and and and, and it does differ quite a bit. I know Judy mentioned India and there's a story of a mission group that went to India from the Midwest United States and when they got there the missionary in India told them they couldn't wear makeup and no no jewelry because that particular group thought jewelry and makeup was against the Bible. I mean, these are conservative people from the Midwest of America and then they got to the church service and all the women at the church service were showing off their bellies. And that was very inappropriate to people from the Midwest uh, in the United States. So both groups were offended by what the other group thought was normal. Now, neither of those things were bad. In their culture, showing their belly is completely appropriate. Wearing jewelry and, and makeup in American culture is completely appropriate. Neither are bad. But if those are stumbling blocks for the people that you're meeting with, you have to adjust if possible. It, using your freedom in a way that that shows the love of Christ is the objective. So it's it's not the jewelry, it's not the makeup, it's not the dress. None of these things are bad. The key is how we do it. I mean, I go, we go to a church that's a very conservative church. Our pastor wears a, a coat and tie every Sunday. But we have people that come to our church in t-shirts, shorts, flip-flops, and it's completely okay. And then there's other people in, in full suits and women in fancy clothes and heels. In that environment, it's okay. You know, we have a couple people that are from Nigeria and they wear 
we'll just say very brightly colored clothing from time to time. And they have big hats and, and none of that is offensive to our group. But if there was someone in the church that was offensive, offended by one of those things, then that should be addressed in a way to make sure that we don't make them stumble. So what's appropriate and what does not offend has to be taken into consideration. And the reason is you want to love those people. Uh, we can't satisfy everybody. Don't, don't even try. It's impossible. But it's important to not, not intentionally try to offend others. And, and unfortunately, cultural things sometimes get in the way, and especially these trends that come and go. And I, I'm sure K-pop is, is uh, important to some of you. Uh, actually, when I heard K-pop, I thought it was like a lollipop or a, 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 or a, a cold thing you would eat. I didn't realize it was it was clothing. But I guarantee that 10 years from now or 15 from years from now, no one will remember what K-pop was. Uh, it, it, it is just like the leg warmers I mentioned earlier. You'll have to Google it and, and you'll laugh because it's many of the things that are sold to us as fashion are really just ridiculous. It's an attempt for them to make money off of us and off of you. And we need to be good stewards of what God has given us because that's the way we live our life best. Oh, let me let me just talk about those K-pop stars that you guys watch all the time and you, you tend to idolize those people and I don't think this is the, the best model that you can look at to to model your life. I know uh, a K-pop uh, artist. It popped up on my 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 thread on my uh, news that this guy committed suicide at 32 years old. And it's like, okay, you think you want to pattern your life according to these people, but you have to realize that without God, or you know, not knowing Jesus Christ, um, and in in Him, a pattern of the way you live is is you're gonna be miserable no matter how much money you have, how much how much um, popular you are. It's it's never gonna be satisfying to your life. And why I can say that because this guy he looks good, he he's handsome. But then, why did you, why are you gonna take your life for for like, and and you're supposed to be really you know popular and and you have everything that you want. What that's what the world said, and but then you're not satisfied. So it's like you think that life is not worth living. Yeah, and contentment is really at the heart of this, and you can always only be content when you're doing what is right in God's eyes. When we, when we don't, we're never content. That's the reason those people you idolize, they're not happy. You can hear it in their speech when they're, when they're interviewed. They're, they, they don't talk in a way that really is worth emulating, and their lives are usually fractured and messy. We, we don't always see that, but with social media, we should pay attention. They're unhappy, and, and often they do. They uh, try to kill themselves because they're so unhappy. Uh, money and things and fancy clothes will never make you happy. You get happy for maybe a second when you first get it, and then that happiness fades so quickly. But when you are living your life in line with what God would want your life to be like, your satisfaction goes on and on. And I, I just want you kids to know in the Philippines that we get great satisfaction in sharing with you because we get to see you grow. We get to see you better your lives through your education in the Philippines. And that is a lasting thing. That is worth spending our time and our money and our energy on to, to further what God would want to do with your lives. And that is really what, what is the most important thing. So let me go ahead and close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share with these students in the Philippines. And you know that as humans, we, we have some, some crazy ideas. And help us to stay focused on what you say is good and what you say is, is right. 
instead of listening to all the, the people around us that are just as messed up as we are. Help us to obtain that contentment that can only come through a life focused on you, satisfied with what you have given us, and using those things we have been given the way you would want them to be used. That is the abundant life you have promised us, Lord. And I pray for each one of these students that they might have moments during this camp that allow them to see you, Lord, and allow them to, to see that living a life centered on you will result in a better life lived right now. And I pray all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I guess the last thing I want to leave you with is have a lot of fun in this camp. And don't worry what the person next to you is wearing. Uh, don't worry about what they think they like as far as music. You know, social media can be a real detriment in our life because we see all these things and that makes us want all these things. But it also can be a really positive thing, especially when you're showing and sharing the right things. So if you focus on what is right and what is beautiful and what is the proper way for you to use the money that God has given you, that stewardship, you're going to live a life that is satisfying. You're going to be content with whatever it is you have. Like Judy said, she was content when she only had two t-shirts and one pair of jeans. I grew up and I, I was lucky to have a couple of shirts. Uh, I had to wear bib overalls a lot of the time because I couldn't wear jeans. I couldn't actually buy any jeans that fit me. But I was very content. It, it, I didn't feel like I was missing anything because it's only clothes. And when I listen to music, it's, it, it's only music. I love music, but it's really only music. What's really important is understanding that that's what you've been given and be happy for what you have. Don't always be envious of what you don't have. There are plenty of opportunities in the future to have things as you get your education and you move forward and then you have money to buy things. I, I remember a story of, of, of Judy when she was in college, she couldn't afford a hot dog and she's so envious of that hot dog. Now, we, because of the career we have had, the, the education that we got, we can buy hot dogs for a lot of people. In fact, we fed many, many people in the Philippines. So it's okay to not have things you desire now it gives you something to work for in the future and and stay focused on the hope for the future instead of the discontent in the now. Anything else? I think we're good. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today and I, I hope that something in this message was beneficial to some of you out there. If you have any questions for us, you feel free to send us an email. The email should be on your screen. And we plan to be in the Philippines in October if you'd like to meet us face to face. So until then, from us here at Punla Christian Ministries, I hope you have a lot of fun in this camp. And I hope God speaks to you in a powerful way that will help you to stay focused on him in your life. So until next time, God bless. <laughs>